In this program, we're going to learn how to use input boxes and get an introduction to loops. We've got a little scoreboard set up here, and you see we have some very generic names, Team 1 and Team 2, LBL left team name and LBL right team name. We'd like to give them more specific names, and we'll use an input box to do it. First, we'll declare two string variables to hold the names of these teams. We'll have one for the left, str left team name, and we'll also create one for the right, str right team name. Next, we'll use an input box to get input from the user on what they would like to edit the names of the teams to be. In this video, we'll just look at the left side, leaving the right for you to do. So we're going to put the answer into str left team name, and it's going to equal an input box. And if we give them a prompt, they'll know what to do. Enter a name for the left team. Once we get that, we'll update the label with the new name that we got for this team. That's the very basics. There's more we're going to do in a moment, but let's check out what we have so far. When we click Edit Teams, there's our prompt, Enter a name for the left team. Notice that the caption is the name of our program, Input Box Example. We type in Home, and the text changes to Home. If we type in Visitor, it changes to Visitor. When we click Cancel, though, an empty string is returned. Notice how there's an empty string in the label. We'll address that later on. We can put more information in the input box. For instance, we can change the title or caption at the top. So we'll make it say, Edit Left Team. Now if you notice the very top of the input box, you'll see that it says, Edit Left Team. Everything else works the same for now. We can also provide a default response. It will be highlighted in blue. So right now we'll put our default response as Team 1 in quotation marks, say the string literal Team 1. So now when the input box comes up, there's Team 1 right inside there as a default response. We'll type in Bulldogs. But notice Team 1 comes back up because that's literally the string we said to have come up every time. And reminder, we still have to deal with that cancel issue later on. Well, let's make our variable equal team1 at the very start. And then we'll refer to our variable down here as our default response. This is close to giving us what we want. There's team1 as a variable. We type in bulldogs. But... This Edit Teams button got pressed again, and the variable got reset to Team 1. Looks like we're going to have to use static instead of dim. That way, the value will be retained every time that this uh, button click event occurs. Now, if the value of that variable changes, it will be remembered. So we'll type in Bulldogs, and now because the variable is static, that value is retained the next time Edit Teams is pressed, and this is pretty handy now. The default response is what was already there for the team in the first place, or in the most recent instance. Let's deal with the issue that we could possibly get an empty string, which we don't want. If that happens, we want to make the users do this input box all over again. That's going to be a loop. We're going to keep looping them and looping them and looping them until we get what we want. There is no escape until we get what we want. And we want a non-empty string. We're going to use a do loop. We'll type the letter DO, hit enter, and we'll get loop at the bottom. We'll learn more about many things that we could do either at the top with a do or at the bottom with a loop. We'll focus on the bottom today. It's a post-test loop. We'll do the testing at the bottom. We're going to slide this input box response inside the loop because that's the action that needs to be repeated over and over again if we don't get what we want. And we want to loop until, well, 
until we get a non-empty string. So until str left team name is not equal to string.empty. So we'll run our program. Remembering that cancel generates an empty string. We type in home, things work. If we take the cancel button, notice that we come right back. We get a new input box. You might not be able to tell, but it is a brand new input box. If we try to hit OK with an empty string, we get another input box. There's no escape from this loop until we put in a non-empty string. That's one way to use a post test with loop until. We could also say loop while. Loop until means we keep looping until something is true and then we escape. Loop while means we keep looping while something is true, otherwise we escape. So we could say we're going to loop while the user enters an empty string. And as long as that is true, or while that is true, that the string is empty, we're going to keep looping. The program is going to run exactly the same way. It's just another way to attack the same issue. We keep getting an input box back because we keep having an empty string. Both ways work. And again, these are called post-test loops because we're testing them at the bottom. And again, a reminder that when you press cancel on an input box, you get an empty string returned. Even if there was text typed into the text portion of the input box, it's going to return an empty string. But we can improve this even more. You may have noticed that when we press cancel, we still set str left team name equal to string.empty. Well, maybe we want to leave str left team name as it is and only change it into, once we've guaranteed we've got a non-empty string. So let's declare a second variable. We'll put actually two of them here, one for the left and one for the right. And this string variable will equal what's in the input box. It's kind of a holding place for the answer. So instead of putting the answer directly into str left team name from the input box, we'll put it in str answer left. And we'll make sure that this loops while that is equal to string dot empty. And now once we get out of this loop, we're guaranteed that str answer left is a non-empty string. Now we'll go ahead and put it into str left team name. So it was kind of a holding place for an answer from the user until we got an answer that was satisfactory. And then we go ahead and allow our main variable to be changed. So this will allow our default answer to remain the team name that previously was entered. So team one is what's inside the variable. We put in bulldogs. Now if we hit cancel, we get bulldogs right back. There the bulldogs comes back again. Because what we type in here is first going into a holding variable, str answer left, and then after the loop, it's assigned to our main variable, str left team name. So we waited to use our main variable until we were guaranteed that we had what we wanted from the loop. The loop locked in our users until we got the answer we wanted, and then we knew we were safe to go ahead and update our variable, our main variable. And now you can try to do this for the right team. A reminder, input boxes always return strings. So if you need to get a number out of that, you're going to have to parse it into an integer or a double. 